Welcome to a chapter of my life with me, the Gabby Cabby, and beautician, model, entrepreneur, and business lady, Miss Jenny Lair. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm okay. And what beautiful surroundings have we got in at now, yeah, Coastal? Do you play golf before we get into this? I haven't, no. no. Would you like to play golf? <laughs> Maybe. It's probably a bit wet today, so that's for another day. But you have had such a colourful life to date. Almost like a Hollywood script, which you never know, in years to come, it may be on the silver screen. <laughs> but on the horizon, reality TV surely must be up your street. Love Island, Strictly, Dancing on Ice, No Likey, No Lighty, Take Me Out. <laughs> or Celebrity, I'm Get Me Out of Here in the Jungle with Anton Deck. How do you get on with snakes and rats? Not very well. <laughs> okay. Is there any one of those that, that you would fancy doing? And why? Potentially. What one? Let's have a chat about that. Reality TV. Ooh, um, maybe Strictly. Okay. Do you dance? <laughs> no. <Nope>. Okay. <laughs> but I'd learn to. Yeah. Yeah. How about Love Island? Because that is a very, very popular programme, isn't it? All the kids are watching that. Even my daughter, who is 11. And by the way, she said, who's that lady that you're interviewing? She's beautiful. Aww. She's absolutely right. That's very cute. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we can, uh, we can rule out snakes and rats and stuff like that, but uh, Love Island is possibly on Maybe. the horizon for <laughs> you. Right, before we turn over the chapters mm -hmm. of the pages to the chapters of your life, let's go back to the beginning. Who is Jenny Laird? Where are you from? Um, so originally from Birmingham. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where about you from? Uh, Streetly. Okay, so you're a Sutton girl. Yeah. Yeah. Where was you educated? What school did you go to? Um, St Francis. Okay. Which is Aldridge. So. It, now, is that like when when we say that is that a school that you go to from four to, to sixteen, or is that your comprehensive? No, that was my um, my senior school. Yeah. Yeah. And what was you like at school? Was you a good girl? Was you a bad girl? What was you like? <laughs> yeah. What would your mum and dad say? What do the teachers say on your report? Oh, um, yeah, I wasn't a good girl at school. No. No. Did you pass many of your examinations? In my day, it was like CSEs. I think it was GCSEs, O levels, GCSEs. and A levels in your day. Yeah, I mean, I did pass them, but yeah, I did quite well with my marks considering I didn't go to school. Oh, oh, okay. You didn't turn up very often. Not very often. Oh, okay. So you've left school with not much of an education. You've left school with not attending very often. I'm guessing your mum and dad weren't too pleased about that and you've got no. quite a few stern tellings off and <laughs> yeah. locked in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. When, when you then went into the big wide world, how did you get on for jobs? What, what, what happened after school? So luckily I've always been quite fortunate when it's come yeah. to sort of job interviews. I've mm -hmm. never had a job interview and not got the job. So yeah. <laughs> I've done all right. So what kind of jobs did you do when you left school with no qualifications? So it was mainly hairdressing, so it was jobs yeah. where you don't really need um, mm -hmm. qualifications, but it was something that I was interested in. So yeah. I always kind of wanted to get into the beauty or hair industry. Now, did you get examinations for it or did you just like pick it up through working at a salon and start cutting people's hair. I always started yeah. um, qualifications, yeah. but never managed to finish any. Yeah, because that's the best way in doing anything in life, really, isn't it? Blagging it, getting through. Yeah. You can't be. It till you make it. I think so. <laughs> I, I don't think you can can better sitting down in a chair, starting cutting people's hair. You start talking because as a hairdresser, you hear all different you life all stories, don't you? Yeah, exactly. So you you would ideally cut out for that now. Somewhere between hairdressing and working or going out into clubs, you, you got caught up with some people that probably, looking back, you would have not necessarily got caught up with these people. Yeah, is that fair? That would be a fair comment. Okay. And also, where I'm leading is if you go into a search engine and you type in Jenny Laird, there's a famous actress of the 1912s who's passed away now. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> no, it's not you. But what does come up is Jenny Laird drugs. Yeah. Now, I think that that's bang out of order because you've done an awful lot of other stuff. But it does seem to always be in this country that if you've done something like that, it's very difficult to lose that tag. Yeah. So let's start now turning over the pages about how you got involved 
in that drug scene and the consequences of that. Yeah, so I mean, I was young, yeah. obviously a bit stupid, mm -hmm. um, I kept bad company and I was arrested mm -hmm. um, and questioned about a group of people. Um, so, because I was obviously a bit younger, I didn't want to get myself or other people into trouble. Yeah. I went no comment mm -hmm. through the interview with the police and found myself on a conspiracy charge mm -hmm. um, to supply Class A drugs. Now, you say Class A, my understanding is it was cocaine and cannabis. Was, yeah. it, was it anything more heavy than that? No, cocaine, cannabis. I mean, obviously cocaine is yeah, as exactly, heavy as it gets, yeah. really. But yeah. um, obviously there's a whole other side to the story yeah. which I've never told or really spoken out about. Okay, um, so well, now's the time. To... <laughs> what you hear in the papers <laughs> isn't necessarily true. What you see and hear in the papers, generally there's a fabric of truth, yeah. but not an awful lot because yeah. they will they will tell a story that sells papers and they will make you out to be either A good or B bad. Yeah. That's the way the papers, that's the way the media works. Now is the time for you to tell your story. Um so okay, I was obviously very young. How um, old were you? When I got arrested I was I think nineteen. Yeah. So 19, I was on bail for 15 months. Uh -huh. I know exactly how long because that was the hardest part. Yeah. Because you don't know what to expect. Um, so it was me and actually my best friend. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a difficult time, but she's been my best friend since I was 10. So everything we've been through our lives, we've always been through together. So yeah. we had each of us for like support. Um, so yeah, we got both got arrested. Um, she was staying over at my house. They raided my house. They found no drugs at all, mm -hmm. um, which was never actually sort of publicised, the fact that there was no drugs ever found on my, in my possession. Yeah. And um, I was dragged into a conspiracy charge, which at the time I didn't really understand. But now, obviously, now I'm older, I understand that being in the wrong crowd of people, you mm -hmm. do get yourself involved into a conspiracy. So it was things like my friends would message me and say, I'm off out on the weekend, do you know anyone who can get me some cocaine? Yeah. And I would reply saying, yes, and so-and-so can look after you or get you some. Mm -hmm. um, so although money didn't exchange hands and I wasn't in possession of the drugs just by sort of being a bit younger and a bit stupid, really, yeah. um, not knowing I could get into serious trouble. Um, but now I understand, obviously, that's helping in the supply of a drug circle and you're in a drug ring by doing that. So whether you may profit or whether you handle drugs, you are still conspiring. Did you handle the drugs? No. So all you done was tell people where they could get the drugs from, you didn't actually supply them. Because I read that article in the paper, it, my understanding from reading it was Jenny Laird and two other model friends were supplying the whole of Staffordshire nightclub scene with drugs. That wasn't the case, no, was it? That wasn't the case, no. So you took the punishment for doing the crime, but in, in, in reality, there wasn't much of a crime that you committed. It was more a conspiracy. Yeah, which is a bad charge, yeah. the conspiracy, but you know the papers sort of made it out to be yeah. so much bigger than it was, and I think the fact that I was a glamour model at the time, they tried to make an example out of me, and mm -hmm. it obviously hit all the headlines, which is how my family found out about it as well. I was quite embarrassed, and I didn't want to shame my family, yeah. so I didn't tell my dad, didn't tell my nan, my granddad, my mum knew what was going on, mm -hmm. and my big sister, um, but I didn't want anyone else to know, because yeah. obviously I didn't want to let people down. And the way that my dad and my family found out was me being on the front cover of papers. What was their immediate reaction to you, Jen? Because, you know, you're, you're probably a similar age to, to my eldest kids. And I know how I would have reacted. How did your mum and dad react to you? I think my mum and sister, my sister was heartbroken. Yeah. Um, we're very, very close. And I was very much involved in the upbringing of my nephew. Yeah. Um, so I kind of played the dad role really because his mm -hmm. dad's never been around and obviously to be taken away she really found that quite difficult mm -hmm. um, sort of parenting on her own um, my mum was very supportive my dad for the first time in my life we actually sort of built a relationship I think he felt bad that he wasn't there and he and wanted your mum and dad split up yeah and, they split yeah. up when I was like nine okay. so um, come from a separated family, but I didn't live at home growing and, up. And anyway. so, so are my kids yeah. as well. There's nothing wrong with being no. separated from your biological parents. So yeah, you carry on, kid. Yeah. So um, me and my dad actually got a better relationship while I was in jail. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, it wasn't nice for them to hear, and I think they were 
quite sad the fact that I didn't feel as though I could come to them and tell them what was going on. Yeah. And the fact that I'd kind of dealt with it all on my own mm-hmm. for the 15 months while I was on bail. But the 15 months on bail probably, like I say, was the hardest part of it because yeah. you don't know what to expect. And you see all these things in movies about what jail's like and, you know, you see things on telly. And, I mean, I was quite lucky with my sentence, really. I had mm-hmm. some lovely teachers and that's where I just thought, you know, I want more for myself. Yeah. I, I don't, you know... I don't want to get wrapped up in this world so I decided to make sort of dreams and sort of pursue them while I was in there so start my journey while I was there. Now your 15 months that you was on bail where where were you when you was in on bail was you in a prison at that time? No no I was um I was just living at home okay yeah so it's quite a scary time because you don't know what to expect and you don't know how long you're going to get. Was you under curfew as well you couldn't move at certain times in certain places? Yeah there was certain rules I had to um sort of obey but I can't remember exactly yeah, what they sure. were now um, I think it was like things like you know you can't leave the country and go yeah, yeah, on holiday yeah. and things like that mm-hmm. um, but there was one guy in the conspiracy who actually went on the run so okay. when he went on the run that's why we then um, got remanded so now we don't have to mention those people because yeah. I'm guessing that you've moved away from those people yeah. now so you've you've served your time what was it like when you you had that sentence given to you at, at court what what court were you at Stafford Crown. Okay. So you're standing in the dock there, a young kid, you're 22. 21. 21. Yeah. You know, key of the door and all the rest mm. of it. Your life is just beginning, you're going out, you're feeling your feet, as you've alluded to earlier. We'll talk about that in a minute. You were a model, you're a glamour, uh, glamour model. Your whole life is mapped out in front, mm. and you're in that court in front of the judge, and then it's like, I was going to smack, but I'm going to knock that over, so I'm not. <laughs> but it comes down and, and you're sentenced. Mm. How did you feel at that moment in time? It just didn't feel real. No? No, it just didn't feel real. And like I said, my best friend was with me. Um, I was the second person out of, I think, about 13 people to get yeah. sentenced. Um, I was the person with the second highest sentence out of everybody which mm-hmm. obviously for me felt massively unfair because yeah. I know the truth I'm the only person really who does know the truth mm-hmm. and my involvement in it so it just felt unfair now that truth could come out in the book mm. we want to give a little bit away today yeah. but not everything because you know the truth and I think that it's a, a, a big selling I think it could be serialised in a paper I think it could be in a book. I think, you know, you could make some, some money out of that, and, and, and rightly so. So, you're actually being banged up. You're behind bars. Mm. The door for the first night, now, the reality's set in. From in the court, it's a haze. Reality is set in. You walk through them prison doors. You've probably got a little bag. You're walking in there. That's going to be your home for... How long was it that you was in there for? I got um, three years, three four years. months, so I did 20 months. Yeah, so that's your new home. How did you feel that night when the lights went off? How, how alone did you feel? What, it, where, was your, where was your mindset at that time? It literally doesn't sink in, yeah. so you just can't quite believe what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I was banged up with a murderer straight away. Really? Yeah. So that was quite scary, really. But you were in a female prison? Female prison, yeah. What one was it? Um, first of all, it was Foston Hall. Okay, where's that? Uh, quite close to sort of Birmingham. I okay. Think it's Derby Ware, sure. if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't stay there for long, so I was in um, a four dorm with, luckily, my best friend, and then another lady, and then a lady who was in for murder. So it was quite intense to start with. What was it like being in there when, not with a murderer? Because, well, again, we say murderers, there's, there's different degrees of yeah, murder, I mean, aren't there? You know, I met some great people in jail yeah. and some people who I just couldn't understand why they were there. Yeah, yeah. Um, people who've taken the rap for people yeah. and, you know, this lovely old lady who was in for some that, you know, she shouldn't have been in for. A bit like Sally Webster from Coronation Street. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I made the best out of a tough situation and just tried to stay strong and get through it and look forward to my future and I had to stay str- like obviously strong yeah. for my family, for my sister, for my nephew. Mm-hmm. Now you educated yourself, didn't you? Yeah. Behind bars. For some people, prison is almost 
It's almost the way of life, isn't it? Yeah. You go in prison, you come out of prison, you go back in. There's no real... There was one girl who came in three times on my one sentence. Flipping it. Yeah. Was that prostitution? Um, I think it was for things like shoplifting. She yeah, was on, okay. on drugs, yeah. so um, yeah. she came in three times, but mm. she quite liked being in jail, whereas I wanted to go home. So I was yeah. like, if you really want to be here, you can have my bed and I will go. Because <laughs> she just kept coming back. <laughs> now, your education, your rehabilitation, mm. how long from being in prison did you think, right, I've got to get my life back on track now. I've done wrong, I've committed the crime. Mm -hmm. Okay, it wasn't as it was written, perceived. Mm -hmm. That wasn't me that, that, that took the punishment. Well, it was me that took the punishment, but the crime wasn't what they said it was. But, you know, you stomach it. You swallow that bit of his pill. the crime was what it's, they said it was, and yeah. obviously I'll take full responsibility for it, but mm -hmm. the way they played it up in the papers, I think, was unfair. Yeah, it was hand up. Yeah. Yeah. But you never had any self-pity, did you? you? You moved on. You're trying to correct a, a bad situation in your life you've got your dad back mm. so it ain't all bad yeah. you've got your education for the first time in school where you had to go to school you've got no choice about going to school now yeah. you're in prison you can't go anywhere so what what was the first what the, the first book or the first how did it work in prison what did you do so i just made plans and i always wanted to own my own beauty salon one yeah. day so i just thought i might as well start on my journey to do that i mm -hmm. made the most out of the two years that i was there yeah so I did beauty level one, level two, and I did my hairdressing and sort of set myself up for when I was to be released so that yeah. I could go on to further skills. Mm -hmm. So have they got courses when I'm, when I'm trying to get to? Have they got courses in, in the prison yeah. for girls that could do that? Yeah, they've got loads of courses, to be honest. They okay. do cater for practically everything. So I redid my English, my maths. Yeah. I did a computer course. I just yeah. wanted to just make the most out of the time I was there and... I think getting my head like stuck into that mm -hmm. sort of made the time go a little quicker. Yeah. And also you've got something to look forward to as well, haven't you? Yeah. You know, you're occupying your mind, you're being busy. Now, we, we go back to your modelling. You were a model before you got involved and got embroiled in all this drug situation. Yeah. Were you a model when you come back out as well? How did you get into modelling in the first place and what kind of modelling? So I was scouted at the clothes show. Um, okay. In Birmingham? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I then had a photo shoot with an agency, yeah. found myself on the front cover of the Daily Sport, and it just kind of okay. went from there. <laughs> so it's that kind of modelling? Yeah, so I did all the lads mags, yeah. and had my own calendars out, I won awards four years in a row for like cover girl of the year and various things like that. So. Did you enjoy that chapter of your life, modelling, and do you still do the modelling now? Modeling's a big eye opener. Yeah. Um, in, I can't really say uh, I enjoyed it too much. Okay. I think it's more a lifestyle that you fall into. Okay. It was an easy lifestyle, so it's not something I massively enjoyed. But yeah. What didn't you enjoy about it, and what did you enjoy? I'm guessing the so money and the I suppose, pain. Yeah. I mean, the money was very good. Yeah. But what I hated was the pervert men. <laughs> yeah. So I just hated like the way that certain men view you because you have your tits out in the paper and um, they sort of get this idea that you might be a little bit of a slag but yeah I don't know if I can say that word but yeah well, you just did <laughs> but but that is yeah. I think you're absolutely banged on a lot of guys do perceive and so do females yeah perceive you as something but you know that's why I love doing these interviews because when you look someone in the eye and I can see such a, a character that your eyes are absolutely alive and you can tell that you're such a nice kid. Thank you. You know, you're almost like Jenny, the girl that lives next door. And in real terms, you are. But you, you almost lead a double life where Jenny from next door turns into this glamour model, <laughs> this other person. How, how do you separate the two at times? Is that, was yeah. that difficult? It's kind of like acting, really. Yeah. So it's not really who you are. Yeah. And I'd say a lot of the girls that I've met, it's not who they are too. Yeah. So they usually have like a long-term boyfriend who they go home to and mm. they're faithful and they're not yeah. naggy or, yeah, yeah. you know, they're, they're nice, respectable girls. A lot of them are well-educated, but mm -hmm. they know how to use their brain to make money. So yeah. if they're pretty, then they're using that to their advantage. But so, you, again, why not if you've got it flaunted? Mm. You know, we, we have a, a taboo about 
sex and about body image, etc., etc. Um, but I think we're very, very hypocritical, and it seems to be the ones that are a bit ugly <laughs> that, that don't like They're it, and the, the girls, the most opinion. you know what I mean, and the girls <laughs> that are glammed up, you know, yeah. and, but are okay with it, and I think most people would be as well. Yeah. You know. So, do you still do the, the, the modelling, the shooting? I don't really do any glamour modelling now. And yeah. I haven't done for about five years. Um, yeah. Purely because of my boyfriends haven't liked it. Or okay. It's got more listening to other people's opinion. Yeah. Um, but it is a great industry if you want to make some money. Where did you go doing the, uh, the, the shooting? Was you flying out to different countries? Yeah, I was all over. What yeah. country did you prefer? What did, what did you like? I don't know. I've visited. I've, I'm always travelling, so it'd yeah. be hard to say what's my favourite country. But what would I be don't spend much time in the UK. If, if we were, if we were, I mean, as we talk, tra- Thomas Cook have just gone under, mm. haven't they? So that's going to probably start for one or two holidays, unfortunately. But if you was going to book a holiday next year, what three destinations would you like to revisit that you did with your modelling? Um, what took your fancy? Probably, I'd like to go to America. That's okay. somewhere I'd really like to go. But of course, because of the conspiracy yeah. charge, that's yeah. Giving me a few little challenges, which mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to try and oversee. Um, I'd like to visit Australia. There's loads of countries I'd yeah. like to go. I'd like to go to Bali. I'd like to go to, the, you know, Fiji, like mm-hmm. some of the more tropical islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Bahamas. I've done a couple of the Caribbean islands, so I'd like to yeah. do a few more. I just love to travel. I'm not a big fan of the UK. Mm-hmm. And I find it quite a judgmental place as well. Yeah. Um, and it's very image based as well so I think that's why a lot of people nowadays suffer with mental health Mm -hmm. because everything's so image based and no one feels good enough whereas when you're away you can just roam around free no Mm -hmm. one knows you no one knows your background and you're not getting judged as much you can just wear no makeup and just not care would you prefer to wear makeup or not makeup? Do you, do you wear makeup because you think you need to because you're a very pretty girl without the makeup you're a very pretty girl with the makeup as well um, to be honest, I don't wear makeup anymore. Um, okay. I very rarely wear it. Yeah. I've maybe worn it about five times all year. So mm-hmm. um, I don't tend to wear makeup nowadays. I'm more comfortable in my own skin, but it's taken yeah. me a long time to get here. I think the industry really plays a part in how you feel about yourself and you constantly want to change. And one of the girls is you know, getting more surgery and her boobs are bigger than yours, so you feel like you need yours doing. And you constantly feel like you just need to change and you're not comfortable within yourself. Um, mm. But I've finally got to a stage where I, I do actually love myself now and I am comfortable being me. Um, and I just think you can't live life thinking about what other people are thinking because you actually can't please everybody. Yeah. So you have to just be comfortable within yourself. And I know that I'm a good person with a good heart. Um, so I'm quite comfortable with who I am now. When I, when I was a black cab driver, I was a cabbie for 13 years, I used to have a sign in the back of my cab. Say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. And in essence, no matter what we do, whatever we say, people are going to either like it or they're going to dislike it. So ultimately, I think you're absolutely right. What you do, you do for you. Yeah. Is there anything, did you regret doing the modelling and doing some of the shots? That you, because sure. again, but yeah, because if you do go onto your, your, your Facebook page or your Twitter, yeah. more so Twitter if I'm honest, than Facebook, and you do type in Jenny Laird, there are some... Yeah. Very revealing photographs, I have to say. And yes, I do regret yeah. them, um, to answer that question, massively. Yeah. More so because I want to be a mum one day, yeah. and I just don't think it's something my children would want to see. I agree. Um, and also for my family, I suppose obviously my yeah. dad or you know my granddad, they're not going to want to see images of me like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously past boyfriends as well, because yeah. they respect me so much, seeing those images of me, though, and knowing who I am as a person, yeah. they kind of don't sort of yeah. fit, you know, sort of work together. Um, but I do regret doing some of the, uh, the, the more nude images. But at mm. the time, I was working for a company, and although my images do look quite explicit, yeah. I was right down the bottom end of the scale. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of girls were doing a, a lot heavier work. Um, so mine was like the lower end of the scale. So at the time, it maybe didn't feel as explicit as what some people were doing. But, you know, I'm in no position to judge anybody and whatever anyone feels comfortable with, that's... That's totally up to them. I think until you've walked a mile in a person's shoes, I don't think anybody's got the right to judge them yeah. because you've got pressures, especially with pressures of working in that environment that, that you're working in. As you say, 
it's about image, it's about trying to get on in, in that environment and building a portfolio and sometimes you do do things that, that, that you regret and clearly you do. How do you get those images off the internet though? You With almost cannot, <laughs> can you? Um, no, I mean I've yeah. tried for, like I say, I've stopped doing that, that sort of modelling for about five years yeah. now and I have, I've tried in so many ways to get the images down. Yeah. Um, but I've kind of got to a stage now where I think, yeah. you know, we've all got a naked body, like what's to be so ashamed about? Mm -hmm. And a lot of girls are sending nudes to guys anyway and it's, I think going it's out the on the weekend dating, and, yeah, you know, yeah. sleeping with different guys every yeah. weekend. So I could judge them, but I don't. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I made a lot of money out of my body and I didn't necessarily take photos and send them out for free. So yeah, sure. the people who are judging me, like, I'm sure that, other people are judging them as well. Now you've left that behind. You've, yeah. You're no longer a model. You're no longer embroiled in any of the the, the passion and the glamour stuff. I do still model, but it's more like for sports lines oh, or okay. makeup brands or um, like wedding dresses and. Oh, is that where that, and, yeah. those photo shoots are on your Instagram? Yeah, you know so that's... I enjoy that side of it. Because the first time I met, we met last week, and I said to you, your best photo is the one when you're wrapped up, bud. You know, you're a lovely kid, and, but again, we make mistakes, and we can't take it off. Yeah. But you have turned your life around, and you're a business lady now. You've got your own salon. Mm. How did how did you get involved in that? Where did, where did you get the drive to buy your own salon? And you had a grand opening with a few celebrities as well, didn't you, locally? Yeah, so the journey started while I was in jail. Like yeah. I said, I just wanted to make the most out of the time I was mm -hmm. there. I yeah. wasn't going home. There was nothing I could do about it. So I might as well have used the time to my own advantage, mm -hmm. um, which is exactly what I did. So I got myself in a position for when I got out of jail that I could train further. Yeah. Um, so I started in semi-permanent makeup, mm -hmm. and I was What's the first that person to makeup? do microblade brows. So it's like tattooing on eyebrows. Okay. So I was like the first person to use a technique called microblade. So I rented a room at Tony and Guy. Yeah. It was tiny, and I worked every day six days a week mm. and tattooed on eyebrows so I saved up all my money and got my own cosmetics clinic. Now for people <laughs> like me that don't understand I mean you can look at me I mean I don't go to a beautician <laughs> I haven't been to a hairdresser since 1982 <laughs> I think it was. How do you tattoo on eyes? How difficult is tattooing stuff like so that on the body? There is a skill to it for I was sure. going to say there must be. But I literally had people catching planes for my eyebrows so it was quite overwhelming. Really? Yeah from Dubai, from France, from Germany so Spain, people wow. were literally catching flights. Do you still from do my that, skills. Jen, where people come I in? actually don't. We, we do offer the, um, the semi permanent makeup and we actually do have a training academy where we yeah. offer the, uh, the training as well. But I actually don't do any practical work myself now. I'm just running the business and I've got another two clinics opening this year. Mm -hmm. um, the training academy is expanding as well. So I'm just sort of looking to branch out more and grow my business. So, where did the name come from then, Jen? Class Cosmetics? So I just toyed around with a few names, yeah. had a list, and was just drawn to the Class Cosmetics name. I thought it was good for branding, looked yeah. quite simple, and I just thought it would look good, and it was easy to remember. But the essence of the name and the brand, it's so important, and how, like, how difficult was it to get the right name? How important was it to get the right name? Important for branding, of course, yeah. and you want people to you know, remember the name, yeah. and if they Google search it, so... Mm -hmm. I thought I'd keep it nice and simple. Yeah. Most common procedure that you do in your... Uh, do, you, do you call it a clinic? We call it a clinic, okay. yeah. So most common procedure would probably be aesthetics. It's yeah. massive nowadays. So mm -hmm. everyone's getting filler, getting Botox, just trying to make themselves feel a little bit more confident. Now, Botox, how, how clinical is Botox? So it's um, a doctor's procedure. We okay. only have doctors working in the clinic yeah. um, doing the injectables. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a pretty uh, intense procedure. <laughs> did you used to do that before? Have you done I that did, procedure? Yeah, I was um, beauty qualified. Okay. So, um, to a higher level, which meant I was able to, to do those courses, but I just think it's best left to experts. And what's the youngest age that, that people come in and do, do the Botox or have the Botox? Or do you get pensioners as well that <laughs> do the Botox? We do, we get all ages. So, okay. it starts from about 18, 19. Yeah. Um, but they say prevention is better than cure, so it's always easier to prevent wrinkles coming than it is to sort of try and cure them once they're already set in the skin. 
Uh, any hope for me with all these wrinkles <laughs> on my forehead? I'm sure there's something we could do. <laughs> <laughs> and you're attached to um, to a, an, an agency now, aren't you? I am. Yeah, Sky Agency with young Stephen. Yes, Steve's been looking after me, how's my it, manager. How's it getting on? How are you sorting your surroundings out? Everything okay? Really well, yeah. Steve's a down to earth guy, so he's nice and easy to work with and yeah. he understands me and doesn't judge me for my past. He's given me an opportunity, which I'm grateful for. Now, I read somewhere or you were talking to me about something that, that you you take in, you digest, it's, it's a kind of drink or something, Keta, to, what, you, you tell me all <laughs> about it again, that's the one, yeah, ketosis. So I take a product that yeah. um, biohacks my liver, so mm-hmm. it makes me produce ketones, and we're actually born in ketosis, so it's the way that all humans should really live, to run to the best version of themselves, so I take a product um, every single day, and the benefits are just endless, so a few of them include better sleep, more energy, um, you're burning fat for fuel, so you get your energy from your fat. So ladies are noticing, and gents as well, that their bodies are in you know, better shape than ever. Um, but for me, my love came from the product, um, for the fact that it shifted my anxiety. Now, people would look at you and say, Jenny Laird, how the, lucky, you look a million dollars. How the hell do you ever get any anxiety or <laughs> panic attacks? Why would a beautiful-looking young lady ever suffer with that but it isn't as simple as that mental health affects everybody doesn't it yeah so I think mental health is becoming more popular and people are more free with talking about it now I think people used to be quite ashamed to say that they're suffering Mm -hmm. and whereas now there's a lot more people sort of coming forward and saying that they do suffer with mental health so anxiety was something that I suffered with Mm -hmm. I think you know, it starts from the industry and yeah. constantly feeling like you need to change and mm-hmm. um, being judged. Um, yeah. You know, we live in a world that's very, very judgmental. Mm-hmm. And I think social media's highlighted that more. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of what triggers my anxiety is just maybe the opinion of others. But that's something the drinks help me overcome. Yeah, and I think it's all because you're into dogs, ain't you? You've got is it a pug or a Frenchie or so, a something Frenchie. like that, isn't it? So you got a little Frenchie, <laughs> and you, a you're, Frenchie. T- you're taking little Frenchie out for a walk, and people like you happier and put it instantly on their social media. I've just seen Jenny Laird, she looks terrible. She's got you know whatever on jeans and they got rips and blimey, she don't look like a glamour model today. Yeah. You get all that. People have got everybody's got a backside and everybody's got an opinion, and most people opinions should come out of that backside. <laughs> how, how do you deal with that? Is it better that you just switch off to social media at times? Yeah, I mean, I've kind of got past what people yeah. think about me. Um, I think it's more their problem than it is mine. Sure. You know, I go to sleep every night absolutely fine. I've got yeah. amazing people in my life. I have a great family, mm-hmm. very close to my mum, to my sister. Yeah. And their opinion of me matters a lot more than some troll on the internet. Yeah. Um, who probably doesn't love themselves very much to yeah. be hating on other people as much as they are. Now, let's go back to ketosis. Yeah. Where did you get the product from? How can people get hold of the product, and what so, is it all about? At the moment, we're kind of dominating the UK market because we're okay. a bunch of a very small group of people who have our hands on the product. Okay. It's from America. Yeah. It was designed by um, the US government for the Navy SEALs. Really? And, yeah, so we are sort of, like I say, dominating the UK market with this product. So if you want the product, it has to come from one of me or my team members. Now, going into schools, it, for the education system, and you've got gun crime, you've got knife crime, you've got you know, kids getting into drugs and, and so on and so forth, you would be the ideal person, the ideal role model to, to, to roll out an education programme, wouldn't you? Well, that's very nice of you to say so. But, um, I mean, I would like to sort of help people. Mm -hmm. And I think if I can do it, then there's nothing stopping anybody else. I'm no more educated than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I've probably lived a more colourful life than anybody else. Without a doubt. So, yeah, I just think, you know, anybody's in a a position to change their life. You are um, not a product of your circumstances, Mm -hmm. but a product of your decisions. And we can always change at any point. So it doesn't matter how old you are. You can always become a better version of yourself. And colourful people, colourful characters, um, they would come into the equation there for endorsing your product. Yeah. You know, if you've got um, an athlete or a footballer, for instance, 
people like that, you celebrities, you've got a load of friends that are celebrities and cool, cool people, having them on board, yeah. selling your product. So already Sky's we have limit. a lot of um, athletes on products, football yeah. players, rugby players, and a lot of athletes and you know people in that kind of world suffer with mental health, so yeah. they're noticing a lot of benefits as well as you know a better performance on the pitch and recovery as well, it helps with muscle repair, so um, when players are out, it's getting them back playing sooner. And that's absolutely vital because managers want the players out on the football pitch. But again, going back to what we said earlier, if I was a football player, current football player, I think I'd turn off social media mm. because they do get an awful lot of abuse and that doesn't sit well with, with, with players that are... We, we all suffer with a little bit of mental health, don't we? I think everybody we, does. Exactly. I don't think there's one person on this planet that hasn't really got some kind of mental health issue, whether you're looking at your phone, see what somebody said about me, yeah. um, you're having a, a player or an athlete, you probably haven't run very quick or as quick, or you haven't passed the ball, and there's always someone waiting to hammer you. So an absolutely vital piece of kit, and you are the only person in this country that's selling it, kid. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sky's the limit. It is indeed. So when you're not working, how, how do you switch off? Because you're always on it, aren't you? So when I'm not working, um, obviously I do sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the way that I switch off is by doing yoga. So I've got such a busy mind. Yeah. And I find the only way that I can switch it off is by doing yoga. So I'll try and fit in a couple of hours a week. Talk to me about yoga. How did you get into to it for a start? And, and what is it? And I've, I've seen some amazing photographs on, on your Instagram and social Thank media you. accounts where you're balancing in a position that you've got no right to balance. <laughs> <laughs> you must be so strong. Um, yeah, strong-minded, strong yeah. body. Um, so I was recommended to do yoga by a friend. Mm-hmm. And I gave it a go and realised that for that whole hour, I'd actually managed to shut down my mind, which is something I've never been able but to do. But do you? I actually do, yeah. Okay, so fair play. I'm really concentrating and I'm just focused on, on the yoga. So that's where I found my love for yoga. Is yoga dangerous? I suppose it can be. Yeah? Because some of them grips, you you do need to be, like, literally do need to be strong, don't you? And if you do yeah. overbalance, you could cause yourself a lot of damage. You could. I've fallen on my face a few times. I'm oh, joking, have you? <laughs> yeah. Mind you, haven't we all, to be fair, in life? <laughs> Inspirations and heroes, who would they be growing up? So, a question that I've been asked before, but I don't really have any heroes. Yeah. And there's nobody that I aspire to be, to be honest. Okay. I, I just kind of aspire to be a better version of myself. Mm-hmm. So, I've set a few goals and I'm very much on a journey to achieve them. Bands, girl bands, boy bands, anything girl like that? Girl bands, the Spice Girls. Oh, you're joking? <laughs> what one? I was a big Spice Girl fan, so Mal C. I was obsessed with Mal C growing up. Yeah? I lived in Liverpool while I was a, a oh, child, yeah. so yeah, so she okay. was like my go-to person, but I was very girly as a child, and it's crazy how much I'm into my sport now. Because she did always wear a Liverpool football type, didn't she? She did, yeah. And probably the only Spice Girl that could sing. <laughs> Prize possession. If you was if if your house is burning and you had to run into it and rescue something, what would it be? So that's actually happened. My house was on fire and I did run back in for my prize possession. So I have a blanket which yeah. is called my num num. Okay. And I've had that since I was a baby. Wow. So that's something that even came to jail with me as well. So I've what, always kept it close. What colour? It's pink. Is that still your favourite colour? It is still my favourite colour, yeah. but I feel too old now to like pink, so I have everything red. Red nails, red phone case, so switched over to red. Because I've got an 11-year-old daughter, and, and she, her favourite colour is like purple, it's like purple and pink, it's a yeah. girly colour. So where does Jenny Laird see herself in 10 years' time? What's on that horizon? So my biggest dream is to be a mum. Okay. So I would love a baby girl one day. Yeah who would travel the world with me. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be living it up on private jets. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just very focused and very driven, so watch this space. <laughs> well, you've achieved so much, and I'm sure that you will be able to achieve a baby as well, yeah. which, given everything that you've done in your life, puts things back into reality, that the greatest gift is life, isn't it? Yeah, of course. And Jenny, can I thank you so much for your time, young lady. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. Thank you.